Hey guys, it's me Fox. Today I'm gonna be reviewing uh, Precision ER20 collets and some ISO25 tool holders. I found a pretty good manufacturer uh, of tool holders and collets. They seem to have pretty much all possible collets and holders for every machine out there. So please check, all the information will be in the video description uh, if I can fit it. If not, check their site. In this video I will test those uh, collets and uh, tool holders uh, very thoroughly. Measurements, vibration tests, test cuts, microscope inspections, and I will also show how to dial a collet in a tool holder. So without delaying it any further, let's get into it. All the tool holders come in the plastic tube. Inside there is a plastic bag with a splash of oil very reasonable one. Those tool holders are balanced to standard of G2 uh, and rated to 40,000 RPMs, which is pretty good. And uh, here I'm comparing two tool holders. One is Parfait and the other one is current, which I got. Parfait cost $100, this one cost $12. Doing a quick math, I got 10 tool holders for the price of one Parfait. And uh, seriously, they look identical, even up close. The length, it's exactly the same. Um, everything looks pretty much exactly the same. Uh, seriously, I can't see any difference in between them. And now it's time to see some collets. Collets are 5 micron precision and they call them AAA quality. And the price for those, believe it or not, it's uh, $5. So I got, uh, I think, 25 of them. They come in a box and then they're wrapped in uh, hard plastic uh, with a hint of oil inside again, just to prevent them from rusting. Overall quality uh, feels uh, pretty good. Actually, they look like they're uh, the best uh, collets I've ever had. Just, uh, you know, the finish, grind, and, and they all have the markings like AAA, type collet and they all come as a single size so there is no differences between like uh, one and two or three and four five and six seven and eight they all come in a precise uh, diameters so it's like two three four five six seven eight nine ten millimeters uh, pretty much they are the size of the tool you're going to be using now i will do some test measurements. The first one needs perfect. Looks like there is a subtle wobble but I just picked the random tool holder which I had and run some measurements. Just the same with the new ones. Here I have a new tool holder and I picked it up just randomly. By coincidence it looks better than the perfect. So those numbers are not as important. You can just see that the new ones are not way off. And now I will do vibration test of the two holders to see how balanced are they. Uh, and I'm gonna be using the app on my phone which is called Vibrometer. And it's ridiculously sensitive. And I'm gonna compare empty spindle running 4000 RPM and then uh, with the Parfait tool holder and then each one of the new ones. So let's take a look. This will be a zero for our vibration. Everything above that, that's you know, unbalanced. Perfect. As you can see, it's a bit higher than the spindle by itself. And now I will go with all 10 of the new holders. I was very skeptical about buying uh, cheap tool holders because of the balancing. If the tool holder is unbalanced, it might destroy bearings in the spindle. So I didn't want to do that since that spindle is my precious. So far it looks like those tool holders are really good. I think I'm gonna get another 10, maybe 20, just in case. For better visualization, I'm gonna put all of the tests into one screen so you can see all of them at once.
that was at 4000 RPMs and now I will crank it up to 22 um, and something similar but a bit different uh, empty uh, spindle and then I'm gonna use a parfait uh, tool holder in three different positions so 0 degree 90 and 180 and I'm gonna see how that influenced the balance I think the spindle is balanced to G1 but it's still balanced so there is some imperfections in there the collets are G2 and uh, if you rotate the collet you might find a spot where unbalanced it's kind of cancelling each other or getting smaller And let's see all of them side by side. As you can see, there is a small difference. Uh, the 90 degree rotation was the best, uh, the lowest noise. And now all the 10 tool holders combine into one screen. It's quite possible that the rotation of the tool holder in the spindle is equivalent to average noise uh, difference in between them. I'm gonna put the end mill in the collet. It goes to the very end and I'm gonna leave some shank sticking out. Uh, collet on it, tighten it up. Okay, I'm gonna get the tools and tighten it up. Okay, not too much. Uh, okay, that's enough. I'm gonna tighten it up later on. Now I'm gonna put the tool holder in a spindle. And let's see how it aligns without any tweaking. So here is above one. Here is uh, precisely one, I think. And in here it's just under. So to me it looks like it's within 4 microns, uh, but to fix it they're gonna get the wrench and the hammer. I'm gonna gently tap it to center it better in the collet. And let's see how it looks. close yeah so this is a 10 micron precision uh, dial indicator so one line is 10 microns to increase the resolution I'm gonna move a dial indicator closer so I can see tiny differences a bit better and I'm gonna 
tap it here and there is so much tapping that I had to speed it up but eventually I got to a point where it's uh, perfect so that's the apex in here next one apex goes here so it's I think precisely in the same spot and the last one goes pretty much the same spot I think it should be within a micron like just I don't know maybe two but it's super precise now I will put my uh, 10 millimeter roughing end mill which I use normally to see how it looks and let's rotate that thing holy Jesus <laughs> I've been milling with this thing uh, well 50 microns uh, that's uh, that's a shocker uh, wow and let's see how it looks at the bottom And it goes to 18. And 8. Wow, that's uh, 100 microns off, uh, believe it or not. Um, yeah, that call it goes to uh, trash. Uh, uh, yeah. As soon as I finish that video, I'm throwing it as far as I can see. Now I want to do a test where I can see the finish uh, of those two end wheels. So I'm gonna cut with the crooked one and I'm gonna do another cut with the super precise one and we're gonna take a look uh, how it looks under the microscope. So. The tool holder without a runout seems to be quieter. Surprisingly, there is no much uh, difference. Seriously, like I'm looking at the thing and I can't really uh, see the difference. You can see only the lines from the ball bearings in the carriages, but uh, as the tool finish, can't really see much. It's time to take a look at it under the microscope. It appears like well balanced on the left has uh, straight lines and unbalanced on the right has uh, wavy lines and uh, the height seems to be higher so the cut on the left is uh, flatter than the cut on the right. Oh well, that test was a bit disappointing. Um, I was hoping for some spectacular differences but there were only microscopic differences. Possibly you could see some more differences if you would go with the lower RPM. Uh, so when the one cut is bigger. Um, but if you go fast, not so much difference. But there is still hope. I have a one test left and it will be facing the top. And let's take a look. And again, uh, the tool holder without runout, it's much, much quieter. Now we can see a difference. The one without runout on the left looks uh, clean and nice. And the one on the right has a visible ridge when the one tool path is going over the other. And because it has a runout, it puts the tool on an angle so that's why you have the ridge. I think this test was much better. We've seen some differences and we can draw some conclusions from it. So when your tool holder has a run out, so the tool holder is on the angle, it starts spinning. So it starts milling as like, like it has a radius. 
and that might look uh, like your milling machine is out of tram. So your z-axis it's uh, tilted one way or the other. And actually that might be your tool holder or actually the collet because the tool holders are you know two microns per size so no way to get the uh, hundred microns off uh, at the end. So I have another test where I'm gonna use a um, smaller end mill six millimeter and this time I'm gonna put the same end mill in two different uh, collets so one it's a bad one and the other one's the new good one so let's take a look first pass is the bad collet 50 microns off and now the good one um, I managed to dial it down to 4 microns of run out so still 10 times better and that's the result um, the good one is on the top the 50 microns off it's on the bottom and again you can't really see any difference uh, the reflection appears pretty much the same the only one difference which I notice is the smudge without the coolant aluminium sticks into end mill and it's uh, smudging um, much more so not as great finish and under microscope the left one is the straight and the right one has a 50 microns off uh, run out so same as before it's wavy I think I'm gonna stop myself with the testing. I don't think you can handle it anymore. Uh, I think I give you enough food for thought to draw your own conclusions. And um, let's keep this video under, you know, an hour. <laughs> uh, I guess it would be around 16 minutes or something. Um, so, um, conclusions. Um, I think... Um, the new uh, tool holders are really good and definitely worth 12 bucks. Um, what else? Um, collets are gold, uh, definitely. Uh, I recommend those. So please check all the details in the video description. Uh, I'll try to put as much uh, information I can over there. Uh, because the list of the tool holders is so long, I'm not entirely sure if I can fit all of them. So, but yeah, everything will be in the video description where to get it. And the prices you already know. Um, I can only hope that somehow this video was helpful to you. So please like it and subscribe it and see you next time.